Think about it. Here's a man who's a young man who's gone into prison. <laughs> we would be totally depressed. Imagine depressed going into prison. Totally. Whoa. No speaking to anyone. No this. Imagine what a disgrace. My family is going to think of me this and that person this and that. And whoever else thinks of me and whatever, whatever. Here's a man. He came in. He knows his innocence and he, he got to work immediately. Instead of saying, you know, your parents are favored. They've got money. They've got wealth. They've got this. They've... No, no, no. Your parents, our parents, our forefathers, my forefathers have been favored. What's the favor? The favor is that we believe in the one Lord who made us. That's what it is. We worship our maker and nobody else. We do not associate partners with our maker in worship. No act of worship is rendered to anyone besides he who made me. That's it. That was the message he delivered. And he told them, I call you to worship the same. Anyway, they heard him. They loved him. They learned from him. They Subhanallah, they took from him, they respected him, they were released as he had predicted. One of them was executed, the other one went to serve. And one day they called this man. Now this was the beginning of the other side. What we would term, oh, the success came. But look at how much hardship he had to go through to get to where Allah had destined for him to get. My brothers, my sisters, Allah has destined goodness for you. Be patient. Ride the waves. You will have hardship, difficulty. Inna ma'al usri yusran. Inna ma'al usri yusra. Indeed, with hardship, there is ease. And with the same hardship, there is another point of ease. You will always have ease. Look at the positives. Do you not have faith in Allah? That should keep you focused. Keep reading your Quran, your adhkar. Repeat the names of Allah if you will and you wish. That will help you focus. The praise of Allah as per the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It will help you in so many ways. Praise Allah. Take care of the duties that Allah has placed on your shoulder. Allah will take care of you. That doesn't mean you're not going to go through hardship. Do you know the hadith speaks about hardship? And it says the prophets have had the greatest of tests and challenges and hardship. And then who faces challenges after that? Those who are the closest to the prophets in example. And then those who are closer. And so on. So the closest and then the next and the next and the next. You are faced with challenges. It doesn't mean you lost your home. Allah doesn't like you. It doesn't mean you, you made an accident with your vehicle. Allah doesn't like you. It doesn't mean you lost your job. Allah doesn't like you. It doesn't mean you've been through a divorce. Allah doesn't like you. It doesn't mean you've lost a loved one. Allah doesn't like you. In fact, because he likes you, you've been through that. He loves you. When Allah loves someone, he tests them. If it was the opposite, none of the messengers would have gone through challenges. Not a, no one of them. But the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, went through the same. People were jealous of him. Yusuf alayhi salam. Similar to that, right? In a different way, but similar. People were, they accused him of everything. Wanting power, wanting money. Wanting authority. Wanting to be the leader. And on the other hand, a womanizer, a sorcerer, astaghfirullah al -azim. Things we shouldn't even be saying and repeating. But it's a lesson for us. If the greatest of creation had these challenges, what did he say? He said, oh Allah, oh Allah, if you are pleased with me, all this is nothing. This is okay. Subhanallah. If you are pleased with me, it's nothing. Now let me tell you something. If your hardship, your difficulty, your calamity, your loss brought you closer to Allah even one inch, it was a gift for you. And if your loss, your challenge, your difficulty, your calamity took you away from Allah long term, it was a punishment. And the opposite can be said. If the gift of Allah upon you made you drift away from Allah, it was a punishment. 
Allah gave you wealth, Allah gave you health, Allah gave you looks, Allah gave you everything. And you used that to go away from Allah. Oh, how can that be a gift of Allah? It can't. That's why Allah says, just like some people earn paradise through prayer and through worship of Allah, some people will earn paradise through spending from what Allah has given them. Read Surah to Layl. Allah Almighty says, Who is going to be protected from hellfire? Those who have given their wealth. Those who gave. And Allah says, You said, Wasayujanabuha. Who will stay away from hellfire? The one who was conscious of Allah and gave his wealth in zakah, gave his. Imagine this, this, these verses are just talking about wealth. Subhanallah. Allah speaks about the miserly who hold up onto their wealth and keep counting it. I got 20, now I got 30, now I got 40, now I got 50. It's okay to count, you're a human being, but what of it did you give away to those who don't have? Did you give? If you did, Alhamdulillah. I've got 20, I've got 40, I've given 5 away, I've got 35, I've got 45, I've got 55, I've given 5 away, I've got 50, I've got 60. Are you watching what we're doing? That's a Muslim. That's a believer. Because the hadith says, none of you are true believers until you love for others what you love for yourself. Allah's assistance will continue to be with you for as long as you are continuing to assist. Yusuf salam went through something right at the beginning. An innocent child. People were jealous of what? What he looked like. Subhanallah. They were jealous of his looks. <laughs> Handsome fellow. Secondly, they were jealous of his connection with his father in particular. Why is our father favoring him but there was no favoritism i tell you what i'm a father of quite a few children some of them are seated in your midst mashallah and i can tell you a fact you love each child almost the same at that stage of the, their lives when the others were younger they were loved in a similar fashion a similar way if you're a little bit older and you see your mom or dad kissing the little baby more you know it doesn't mean they didn't do that to you. They did it. But now that you're older and you're watching that, <gasps> doesn't happen to me. Hang on. Do you know it did happen to you? Probably more than this. But now that you're older, don't allow yourself to feel that I'm not loved. But anyway, shaitan creeps in all the time. Makes us think things that sometimes don't exist. And as a result, we tend sometimes to do wrong to those who are innocent. That's the other side of it. But on this side of it, People do things wrong to us when we're innocent. It can happen. It has happened. It shall happen in the future. It did happen. And it is happening probably now to a lot of people. So that's the beginning of the story. It starts off with a dream and so on. But from the negativity, it was the jealousy. لا تقصص رؤياك على إخوتك فيكيدوا لك كيدا. Powerful point today with social media. Here, Yus Yaqub, Jacob, the father of Yusuf, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon both of them and the, all the messengers. He is telling his son, don't even relate the story to your own brothers because they might plot against you. Today, we relate our tale to the entire globe by putting it on social media. Wow, do you see the difference? And then when people plot and plan against us, we say, look at this, but you asked for trouble. Didn't you? According to this lesson, it may not be haram to show a few things, but it is definitely wrong to brag, to boast, to show off and so on. This was not even showing off. It was a dream the man, ha the boy had his father saying, don't tell your brothers because they may plot against you. It's my fear. The shaitan is real in the shaitana. He says shaitan. He doesn't blame the kids. He says the devil shaitan is an outright enemy of man. So my brothers, my sisters, it's very clear when you show off, it's worse than just relating things. If we're taught to hold back from relating certain things that are not necessary for the world to know because they may plot your downfall. What about those things? 
that people definitely would burn about. And you and I know that. We're living in an age. Some of us do it, and wallahi, I won't lie to you, in order that others burn. Let them burn. Post it. Didn't we say that sometimes? Astaghfirullah. Let them see what I've got. Let them see. Yeah, it's not. Relax. Here is a beloved father. He is the father of a prophet. The son of a prophet. Yaqub, Jacob. May peace be upon him. And he's telling his son, La ala ikhwati. You had a nice dream. Beautiful. Don't narrate it to your own brothers. Don't even narrate it. With us guys, we will post a dream. Oh, I had this dream and that dream. It's okay. We're not prophets. And there was no Jacob to tell that to us, right? But at the same time, thank you so much for listening to the short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope. And the same applies to all of us. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.